Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And you might be thinking, hey, is this going to be Gapat showing off his collection, doing the shelves? Not really, but for what I do want to do, I figured, hey, why not start off this way? And of course you can't see everybody because of how much they're packed in there. But a while ago, I was asked if I could, I'm not gonna call it a tutorial, I'm not even going to call it a how-to, but if I could kind of show off what it is that I do for stop-motion animation and the steps that I take. So, I'm going to do the, I guess you could call it, Gotbot True Review of a hobby. Now, <clears throat> before I begin, here's my disclaimer. I do not use... The most expensive, oh my Autobot symbol fell down, what a shame, I'll have to fix that. I do not use the most expensive equipment or programs at all. My whole goal in doing that work has really been not only to show my evolution in that art form, but to show people how you too, if you're inclined and you have an idea, how you can kind of start on your own path and try your own things and explore a little bit with stop motion animation. So what I'm about to show you, the steps I'm about to show you, is certainly not the be all end all. And you'll even notice I have a shelf empty here. But it is a good starting point. What I'm about to show you is a good starting point for somebody who has wondered about it and wondered, hey, can I, is this something I could do? And here is the massive Trypticon who I recently did a review of and by the time you see this, uh, a very short stop motion where he meets Grimlock uh, will be up and that's what I'm going to be working on today. This is a good starting point for somebody who has ideas and don't really know where to begin with this art form. It's very, 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 very basic, but hopefully it helps some of you out who have a creative inclination. We're back to the empty shelf, and that's where we're going to really begin from when we do the Gapa True Review of the Hobby of Stop Motion Animation. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, share. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor. Have a look at Universal Collision and my other stop motions. Um, you know, spend some time on the channel, see what catches your fancy, and of course, follow me everywhere. Okay, so where do we begin? For stop motion animation, the very first thing that you want is figures. And I use Transformers, but I mean, you could use whatever it is that you're into. Um, and there's so many lines and so many options. But this is the crux of what I use for my animations. The next thing you need is an idea. You need a storyline idea. You need action that's going to happen. It might be big action, it might be small action. But you need something to happen. Some people would say next, do a script. Which is basically write it down, write down what everybody's going to say. Especially if you're going to get other voice actors to help you. I don't really tend to work that way. I'm also an author and I kind of have the idea for four seasons of Universal Collision played out in my mind. I, I know how I handle ideas and right now I do all of the voices and whatnot myself. Not necessarily the best job, but I try. And right now I kind of just go off the cuff because I know where the story is going and I have it all sort of mapped out already. Once you have an idea, once you have a story, you need to pick the figures you're going to use, and you begin by setting them up. Of course, I have Dinobot set up there. I'm just using my phone. You could use a tablet. You could use any sort of mobile device if you don't have a really good camera. And of course, really good cameras do cost 
big bucks, but most people have a mobile device this day and age. And here are a couple of the Decepticons I'm going to use. Croc and Skull Smasher will also be in this animation, as will um, the big guy, of course, Trypticon himself. But you see, I have things sort of just set up here at the moment. And I have Grimlock kind of walking on screen. So we're gonna go down a little bit closer here uh, and get an idea of what it is you do to start off after you have everything set up. Okay, so step one, we have an idea. Step two, we have a script if that's how you do it. And step three, we've picked out the figures we're going to use. Now we move to step four, which is some actual filming. So how do you go about this? Well, you set the figures up in the initial stance that you want them. Now, sometimes I customize the settings. I, uh, you know, might use blankets or sheets. I might use rocks. Uh, I might use, you know, pieces from other toys. Um, but I do things that will kind of either make the setting uh, appropriate or as appropriate as possible or have it such that it doesn't stand out so that the focus of the action is actually on the figures that are being used. Now I have them here and this is when the work begins. This is step number four technically and this is the actual shooting. So there's a lot of prep work to do before you actually get into stop motion animation and of course like I said I'm trying to keep this simple affordable especially for somebody who just wants to test out their skills. You don't want to you know have to buy fancy equipment and uh, fancy cameras. Uh, in terms of lighting being used, right now it's a mix of natural light, um, two ceiling lights, and a lamp. That's what's being employed right here now. Nothing, nothing major. Now there are, of course, better lighting setups that you can get if you have the interest, the knowledge, and the finances to do that. But assuming you're just starting out and you want something simple, here's a good place to start. So we have Grimlock set up here along with the Dinobots in back. The Dinobots in back are going to basically be, be stationary in this scene. Of course, we turn on our, our mobile device. And of course, the camera is showing the Dinobots there now and Grimlock walking on to screen. Uh, if you have a little tripod, that really does help a lot. And you would begin, of course, just by taking a picture of what you have here. Boom. Of course, make sure if you can that it's focused. Sometimes they go out of focus. Try to get them. Every now and again, I'll have some that aren't perfect. Um, and I might not even notice it till it's shot, to be honest with you. But try, of course, to keep everything in focus. Now that we took that one picture, we take Grimlock. And we move him ever so slightly. And you take another picture. Uh, if I want him to walk which is very challenging. I find that either you can move the figure left to right a little bit to sort of simulate it. It's an easier way to do it. Or, of course, you could move one foot out slightly and take a picture and then move the other foot out slightly. and take a picture. Naturally, the more pictures you have, the more uh, smooth the movement will be. The less pictures you have, well, the less smooth. Same with movement. If you move uh, a figure, you know, a millimeter or two and then snap your next picture, another millimeter or two, snap your next picture, well, again, you're gonna have more frames to use because each picture is what we would call a frame and you're gonna have more frames to use when you actually go to the animation. If you move uh, a, a centimeter or two, it's going to seem more jumpy when you go to animate it. And we're all guilty of doing that sometimes. And sometimes we get lazy. And especially if it's gonna be a section with uh, some substantial dialogue, a lot of times what people will do, even myself, is I'll take a few still shots and sort of rotate between those because it's just easier that way. You can get the dialogue out and you don't have to worry about doing a whole lot of animating for it. So, you'll go through, you'll have ever so many pictures. For this particular animation, um, 
I think I had somewhere in the vicinity of about 600 pictures. Um, the whole video, I believe, is about six minutes all together. And it's only because this is a very simple one. There's a rule of thumb that says about a thousand pictures per minute. And honestly, if you have good software to handle that, if you are meticulous and patient enough to get that many pictures, great. Um, that's also a lot to deal with. So you might want to do it a section at a time. We'll talk about that in the next section uh, of this sort of overview of what it is I do. Naturally, we would move right through this scene and subsequent scenes to see what it is that comes up uh, over time. You need to have an idea of your story so that you know how you want to move the figures through the scenes. It's a it's kind of a requisite to doing this. So, we'll assume now that we have all the pictures. We're going to go to uh, the next step, which will be step five, and that's going to be actually uploading them to a program. Okay, so now here is the next step. We have the pictures from the mobile device now uploaded uh, to the computer. And, of course, there are stop-motion programs that you could... Um, apps that you could download to your mobile device and do it from there but I find that it's you know again if you want quality ones um, you might have to pay something for them and that's fine if you're cool with that but if you want to keep doing it for free basically um, you know here's kind of how I handle things so I have everything uploaded and I'll I'll show you uh, just really quickly here we go in and we'll go to uh, my videos and I named this as Dinobot Academy and what we have is of course ever so many pictures in here and I already have a whole bunch of audio recorded uh, largely because like I said this video technically is already done so normally I would just have the pictures here and that's what I would start with having a whole bunch of these and Hoping for the best. Next, I would go into just a simple program, Movie Maker. And a lot of people really kind of give this program a hard time. And I understand why. It's very basic, very simple. But it's also one that <clears throat> often comes pre installed. It doesn't cost anything to use. And if you're not really familiar with different editing programs and software, though there are some fantastic ones, this is a good place to start to sort of test your skills. So we will come up and, of course, add photos. A lot of people already know how to do this part. And I will just choose all of these to go in here. And we will open all of them up. And, you know, now we have a whole bunch of photos put in here. Each photo is what's called a frame. And by default, in this particular program, they're set at 7 seconds. So that means each picture would last for 7 seconds. Now, that's fine. That's wonderful if you don't want things to move quickly. If you want things to move quickly, you're going to have to change your frame rate. So that being said, I also, after I have this done, I'll come here and I will add one more. Um, and for me, probably from here, I'll add... Just a simple black picture. This picture is where I put in the title. Uh, it's where I add the credits, um, that sort of thing. And I'll always set this one at, you come here to your edit tab for the picture and there's a thing here that says duration. I will highlight that and set it to 4.00 for the seconds. Then I'll come back here, I will go back to home, and I will put in a caption. And, I don't know, let's say the caption is something like... Formers. Stop motion. And I will... Bring this up. Oh. For some reason, those two pictures changed position. That's not what I wanted. And 
now you'll notice that my um, caption is going to be longer because I put it on the wrong picture. So if you have that problem, you just go here to text tools and again there's text duration come down here and change that to 4.00 as well um, I tend to use the second one here so that the text will fade in and fade out as we move on to the actual activity that's going on great wonderful um, of course, there's a bunch of different options here that you can choose. Again, you can explore that and find out what works for you best. So we are now ready to do some of the animation. And I find that the easiest thing to do is to come here to the first scene. And really, I, I tend to put that one at about one second because I want something solid for the eye to catch before we actually move on to motion and movement. So set that one. And then I will come through the rest of that part of the scene, in this case, because I don't want to stop anywhere in throughout, and I'll change it to point one three. I find that that is a decent fluid uh, movement. I'll also highlight from th uh, this picture here, not the one next to the one second, but the one kind of not the one immediately next to the one second frame, but the one next to the first 0.13 second frame. And I will highlight all of that down to the end of that scene, which is right here, before I change camera angles. And I will come here to animations and scroll down a little bit. And on the second line, the one, two, three, four, fifth one in is one that sort of has one frame flow into the other. That can, if your movements are quick enough, that can help things to look more smooth. So I have that much done now. I will come home here, I will go to add music and add music and I will go to actually I guess I should talk about this since I have it here. You, you'll notice a bunch of pieces of music right here. All of these are ones that I found. Now, one thing that people are always concerned about is attribution and Creative Commons. A lot of them have Creative Commons 3 or 4, which means you need to attribute uh, kind of creation to the creator. If something has Creative Commons 0, that's basically known as public domain. You don't have to give an attribution. You can you can use this and you don't have to worry about copyright issues. All of these are attribution free though in my uh, work typically even just as a point of uh, I guess consideration um, I do acknowledge the contributions of all of these artists because they've, they've done work to create this music and I have those there but I'm not going to use them yet Instead, I'm going to go to my videos and back into Dinobot Academy. Now you'll see I have a whole bunch of files that have been saved as audio files. Um, I use a number of programs. There's a voice recorder actually on my computer, one on your phone as well. You could use that, but you really won't get into any sort of effects or editing. Um, I have a couple of apps on my mobile, actually on a couple of different mobile devices that I also use. Uh, but the majority, honestly, of what I do is uh, through Audacity and that, again, it's free software and you can edit some stuff. There's a lot to it, so I'm just going to show you a couple of simple things uh, just to make very slight alterations to some of the voices. But right now, for right now, since I already have this done, I would go here to Grimmy 1 and I would add it. And you can see where it's added there. So I can come back up to the beginning here and I can play the first part. Okay, me Grimlock think that everybody finally here now for first ever Dinobot Academy recruiting session. Now, 
that's just the start and because I changed the duration of these pictures and these frames uh, what started out as 43 minutes worth of video and I'm putting that in quotation marks is now redu reduced down to 41 minutes that's how you take a lot and reduce it down now if you have a lot of pictures and you're doing a bigger episode you could attempt to load all of your pictures on here at once and it could be seven hours worth of video in a case like that I find that it's best to kind of chunk it up into sections of about 45 minutes get it down so that you actually have video sections of two or three or four or five minutes and save it to save it of course you'll just come up you'll go over here you will do um, save project as and you would name your project and you just save the project as that I would do that with each section and after I had all of the sections done then I would open this program again and put in the four or five sections that I have which is fine because the problem with this program the problem right here is that right now I have this track of audio put in here if I want to add music here I can't because I can't just overlap the audio tracks in this version of media player though there are versions where people can do it not media player sorry movie maker and there are other programs like I think the iMovie software for example is able to overlap some of this stuff but here's what you can do so you have all of this done you save the project you come back after you have the project saved after you have everything done and you're going to save movie and you'll hit save movie you'll come over probably to the recommended you'd name it you'd save it you'd have that section now it's saved as both video and audio as one file and if you want to add music you basically would have to come back in here upload that saved video not the saved project the saved video and now you can add in a second layer of audio if you save it again and then open the video again you can do a third layer of audio and so on and so on but each time that you save the video each time you render the video the quality of it will degrade a little bit so you really don't want to overlap too much audio and have to be saving that video too many times now I mentioned about recording the audio and I said I use audacity um, it's just you know it's just project or uh, sorry it's a program that actually has a lot of stuff to it and if you're into sound mixing whatnot you can do some amazing amazing things for me I would just go here and I'll just do something simple that I'm actually not even using in this video um, here I'll do a, like a quick Optimus Prime one I am Optimus Prime and today one shall stand and one shall fall and I stop it and obviously if I was to play this I am Optimus Prime and today one shall stand and one shall fall obviously that really doesn't sound very much like Optimus and I don't do the best impression of him but if you want to do something simple I mean you have so many things here that you can apply amplify it and if you know about uh, mixing the audio you can do a lot a lot a lot of things with it for me just for something simple if you're not used to it and of course it takes time to explore but just for something simple to start off you can go to pitch and you can change the pitch to maybe let's try this and do preview I am Optimus Prime and today one shall stand and I'm using minus 12,000 there I changed the pitch. I might even come back and I might go down to uh, this one, Reverb. I am Optimus Prime, and today one shall stand. And you'll probably be able to tell that there's a very slight echo there. Uh, I'm not going to do that one. There's also an effect that actually is an echo. And today one shall stand and you can actually hear a delay there and you can change the length of the delay or one other that I'll show you is you can come right down to the bottom 
and hit this. You can alter all of these and get different um, variations on voices. But I could. I am Optimus Prime, and today one shall stand. And I could hit that. And boom, if I go back up here. I am Optimus Prime, and today one shall stand, and one shall fall. It's not perfect, but of course I did this one extremely quick. It is deeper, and it does have a little bit of a robotic tinge to it. Once you have this done, what do you do with this file? Do you save it? Do you, what do you do with it? Well, you would come over here to File, and you don't save it because you can't really use it as a save project in your video. You would come all the way down to Export Audio. You would hit Export Audio, and it's going to come up right here. For me now, it's the, the folder that's in is the Dinobot Academy one, and I have all of these saved. Um, I would come here, and I would, let's just name it, oh, Optimus 1, uh, set the uh, save as type to this here, uh, Way Microsoft 16-bit uh, uh, PCM. Uh, that's what's recommended anyway, and I would hit save and now you have to put in You don't need to fill all this out. I tend to just Put in Gotbot and because this is the first track for Optimus. I will just call it track one And I'll hit okay. I Would minimize this program or in my case right now close it No, I don't want to do And then I would come here and I would add music. So I would come here and I would add my next track. If we come in here and scroll down, we will see uh, Optimus 1 is right there. Of course, it's not the only one I have. For now, since I'm working on this video, I will go up here to Grimmy 2 and We Grimlock say we're going to Now, me Grimlock say we're going to be very professional here. I'm going to change the duration of this frame that's highlighted to about ah 5.00. Let's see if that works. We're going to be very professional here. So, and I'm going to change this one to 1.00, and. I'm going to change all of those to 0.13 and I'm going to come back right here up to there and I'm going to go to animations and I'm going to do that. Grimlock say we're going to be very professional. Welcome one and all. You all here. Now, we have Grimlock there. Welcome one and all. And all. I'm going to change that one to, let's say, two minutes or two seconds. 2.00. And I'm going to change this one to 2.00. And I'm going to change all of those to 0.13. And let's see what I'm to here. Because you pick very special. And you all have. Okay, because you pick very special. Because you pick very special. Again, I'm going to change that one to about 2.00. And I want the animation to go out far enough that it would cover all four of these. So let's try changing them to 5.00 each. Mm, no, not long enough. Let's change it to 3.00. Still not long enough. Let's change it to 2.00. So some of it is a bit of trial and error. 
and we'll add one more because right, I'm not going to do the whole thing here but we'll add one more uh, track of audio here uh, add music and I'll come down to Grimmy 3 and we'll just do this really quickly and we'll go from here up to here and put in our animation again now this section that I just did here, because Grimlock's mouth is moving and he's talking, I would actually copy and paste this section a few times. I'm not going to do it now because I don't really need, I don't have any need to do it now. Um, you know, I'm just kind of showing you the basics. So we'll go back to the beginning and I'm, I'm just going to let this play through so we get an idea of what this will look like. By the way, our 43 minute, uh, our 43 minutes of footage is now down to 38 minutes and the duration of what we have done so far in terms of actual video time is about 42 seconds nothing major and here's kind of what we have so far okay me grimlock think that everybody finally here now for first ever dinobot academy recruiting session me grimlock say we're going to be very professional here so welcome one and you all here because you picked very special and you all have equal chance of being newest member of our team. Mm -hmm. But me Grimlock not really sure about this batch of new recruits and me Grimlock right. And that's where we're to so far. Of course you see that he wasn't, you know, opening his mouth the whole time there. And that's not a big deal because I would, like I said, I would do some more editing with this. But there's your basics. And when you get down to the very end and you have everything done, you have all your audio in, that's when you would go up here. That's when you would do, uh, you know, say project as. <clears throat> then you would go into that file, open it again, and uh, save the movie. And that's really about it for basics. Now you might say, whoa, 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 I've seen in some of your videos when you have some special effects or things flying, so how do you do that? Okay, things flying is a big challenge. Obviously, the best way to do that is to um, have a green screen. And basically you set up a green screen and you put the item in front of it and you move it a little bit so that it looks like it's moving you superimpose another picture on it. I'm not really familiar with that yet, and I'm still sort of toying and fiddling with it. Uh, from what I can gather, a lot of times you need to have specialized programs for that, but I'm trying to find an alternative to it. And when I do, I'll do an update to this video. In the meantime, honestly, you deal with it as best you can. You keep a little piece of the figure off screen so that your hand isn't visible as you're holding it and moving it or you have some sort of a display stand. They're great, especially clear display stands. They're wonderful. Um, some other way of suspending the figure. You can, of course, edit out what you're using to suspend it. Um, there are great editing programs for that. Some people would use um, the GIMP, I think it is, G-I-M-P, I think it is, program. Um, that's great, but once you have a picture done that way, you need to convert it often because not every editing program can take those photos, so you need to convert it to another file name, which means you need not only to change the extension, but you need to actually convert it. That can take a bit of extra time. Uh, if for things like lasers and explosions, again, you could use that program. You've got to make the changes, or if you're anything like me, I would honestly, a lot of times, just use something like, and I'll come down here and find it, under Windows Accessories, and I'll use our good old friend, Paint. And I'll just go up here and I'll find something to open, and I'll come here, and I'll go to Down About Academy, and I'll open, I don't know, let's say, this photo. 
And now I have Grimlock right here. Let's say I wanted him to be shooting lasers from his eyes. Well, he's not a bot, so probably go up here and make it blue. Leave the inside white, let's say. I might choose this overly one. And I need to actually undo that because I didn't change the fill. Uh, make the fill, I don't know, let's just make it solid for now. And I would come here and put a little circle where his eye is. Put another little one over on that side because he's just starting to power up his eye blasters. And now I would honestly just go up and open it and do save as. And when I come here, I would just add the letter A at the end and save it. Then, once I had that done, and I can actually close that. Once I had that done, I would come back here to the picture, undo and undo, and then I would add it in with a slightly different shape or slightly different motion to make it go out. By the time you're done, you might have, you know, copies A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. And they would all then be used. I can close this. Um, yeah, I don't want to save. They would all be used back here in the appropriate place. You would, for example, choose this picture and then you would go up here to add photos and you would add those seven or eight more in after it. And of course, add the appropriate audio and whatnot. There's just some simple tips, some simple ways to start. Uh, obviously, if you guys have other questions, I'd love to hear from you. You know, I always like to talk to you guys and uh, Hopefully, if you've been thinking about kind of trying your hand at this and you really didn't want to make an investment or didn't know where to begin without making an investment, here are some tips for a beginner, for somewhere to start so that you can learn as you go. I hope it's been a help uh, and I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the video.